In this video, we are going to cover how to access GCP cloud storage and perform certain actions like getting the file from your local and then uploading it on GCP storage, how to list the file what we have on the GCP storage and to access GCP storage, we are going to use service account. So what exactly is service account? So service account is a special kind of account typically used by an application rather than person. And also once we create a service account, it's going to give us a unique identifier, which is going to be in the form of email address, which you can use it to provide specific permissions. So first thing is we have to set up our storage service account on GCP. So let's go to the UI. We are going to search for GCP and we are just going to click on Google Cloud. So I'm getting an option over here is console. So I will just click on this and it will just route me to Google Cloud console. First of all, we have to set up our project. Once you set up a project, it's going to list over here. And from here, actually, you can select it under which project you have to set up all these services. So I'm just going to select it over here. And you can see I do have two projects over here. One is GCP sample demo and another is generative language client. If you want to set up a new one, then you can just click on this new project over here. You just have to provide your project name. You don't have to provide location as of now. Once you set up a project name, it's going to give you the project ID and the project name and you can just click on this to create it. Now, once this is done, it's going to be reflected over here and from here, actually, you can select which project you want to choose. So I'm just going to set up everything in GCP sample demo. So I will just click on this. So as per a high level diagram, first of all, we have set up a service account using that service account. Then we can use the cloud storage. So to do that, I'm just going to search for at least service account and you can see like it's coming under IM and admin. So you can just click on this here. You can see the service account is under I am an admin. And first of all, we have to click on this create service account over here to create our service account. And you can provide just any name over here so as your GCP sample demo. So I would just say SA GCP sample demo. You can provide description if you want. And you can see like based on the name, it has created this email address. And this email address is going to be very important for us. So I can just go ahead and create and continue. And now it's saying uh, grant this service account access to a project. This is optional. As of now, I'm just going to keep it as it is. I will just click on continue. This is also optional. So as of now, I'm just going to leave it as it is and just click on done. Now you can see we have one service account created. There is an email of this particular service account. Then we do have name. There is no key ID as of now. When we create a service account, then we also have to create these keys. So what I can do over here, I can just go to manage keys and here I can just select create new key. And you can just select a type, whether it's going to be JSON or P12. I would just go ahead with the JSON one and you can see like it's get downloaded over here. I can just navigate to this path and I can see. So my key has been downloaded. It's in the JSON format. The key is over here. So we have got a JSON file and as well as we have got a key also. This is going to be your service account key. And you also have to be aware of the security risk which comes with this service account. Here you can see the service account keys could pose a security risk if compromise. I recommend you avoid downloading service account keys and instead use workload identity federation. This is the preferred approach. We are just going to get to start with the service account and probably in future videos, we will focus on other authentication mechanism. Once you have your key generated and you have got your JSON file, then we will go to the next step. We have to create our bucket. So I will just search for bucket. Bucket is going to come under cloud storage. We have been routed to cloud storage. And also one more thing, like if you want to access the cloud storage, then you have to enable the billing. So suppose you are just logging it into the Google cloud first time and you don't have your billing enabled, then you will see one option over here, enable billing. And you have to set up your billing account first and then only you can access the cloud storage. That's one point that you have to keep it in mind. And because in my account, the billing is already enabled. So I can just go ahead and create a bucket. I can just name it. GCP sample bucket 08 few things are optional over here. So I will just go ahead and create continue. I don't need multi region and dual region thing because this is just for demo. So I will just select the lowest latency with a single region. I'll just click on create. I will go ahead with the standard one. Choose how to protect object data. I will just go ahead with the default one and create it. Here it's saying enforce public access prevention on this bucket. So I will just keep it as it is and I will just confirm it. And now you can see like my bucket has been created, but on this this particular bucket, I want that service account access also. I will just go on permissions. Here you can see there is a view by principles, grant access and view by rules. 
There are certain rules which has been provided on this particular bucket. There is a legacy bucket owners. Owner can perform any kind of operation. Reader can only read the file. So now what we have to do, we have to click on this grant access and here it's saying like new principal. Now under this new principles, we have to provide our service account email ID. So I need to take this email ID from here. So I will just copy to clipboard. I will just copy it. You will see this icon over here. Then I will go to my bucket and here you can see like I do have this bucket. Now what I can do, I can just click on edit and edit access. So I will just provide our service account email address over here and I can just select it from here. It's going to look like this. Now I have to select a role. You can see some of the roles are already listed over here. There are some other roles as well. Here I am specifically looking for bucket roles. So I will just search for bucket and under this I can see there is one reader role. So I will just select reader. We'll also click on add another role so that I can provide the writer roles. Again, I will select the bucket and from here I will just select writer role and now I can go ahead and just save it. Now you can see under writer, we do have a service account listed and under reader also we do have a service account enabled. It means now our service account can access this particular bucket and perform read and write operation. So before writing our code, there are certain prerequisites that we have to do. The one prerequisite is going to be set up your virtual environment. And the second prerequisite is because we are going to use this cloud storage. So we have to install this specific package, Google Cloud Storage. We will go to our Visual Studio and here, first of all, we have to set up our virtual environment. First thing would be to create a folder over here. I have created this GCP folder and under this GCP folder, I have to set up my virtual environment. So I have to just go ahead and run this command. You can see we notice a new environment has been created. Do you want to select it for the workspace folder? I will just select yes. This would create a virtual environment with this particular name. You can change this name as you wish. You can see this particular folder has been created. Now we have to activate it and under script, you can see like there is something called activate.bat. We just have to run this my environment and then scripts and then activate and it will activate the account. I will just, you know, hit enter. You can just say like run once or always run. I will just select always run. Now you can see I'm getting this my environment over here. The package what we have to install is going to be this pip install Google Cloud Storage as we have to work with the storage. So I will just install this package. Now this particular package has been installed. Second package what I need to install as I am going to deal with environment file in Python. So to access the environment variables, we have to install this particular package and this has been installed as well. Both packages has been installed in our virtual environment. As we have seen in our high level diagram, I have just put some files over here. So to upload a file on GCP, so first of all, we have to get a GCP access and we are going to access this via service account. So the first thing what we have to do is import this service account and this service account is going to come from this google.or2 module and then from Google Cloud package, we have to import a storage and to load like all the environment variables, we have to use this load.env package and first of all we are going to load all these environment variables whatever we are going to put in environment file so let's go into the environment file and see like what we have put over there so first thing is going to be your gcp project id this is required you have to put this in gcp project id you can just put your project name second thing is what we are putting is gcp bucket name the bucket name is going to be this and then we have to provide this google application credentials and under this we have to provide the js on file the service account JSON file which we have downloaded so I will just take it from here and I will just put it in the same GCP folder and this is going to have information something like this where you are going to have the private keys the service account email the client ID and all those details you have to keep this file safe you don't have to expose it to anyone so here you are going to have the details under this you don't have to extract any information from the json file you can just take it from here copy a related path and just paste it here we have provided a name of the service account json file as well so we have everything set up in the environment variables and once we execute this method it's going to load all this environment and we can access all this environments now and can put it into a variable first thing what we are doing is google application credentials what we have seen in environment file we are just putting it into this credential path variable then we do have a project id and bucket name and we are just printing it out over it just to make sure okay the correct values has been picked up after that actually we are setting up our credentials and because here we are totally relying on our service account so using this particular module what we have imported over here we can just go for the credentials and in the credentials and we are going to use the json file 
which we have over here and to use it we are going to use like from service account file we are just providing a this service account file over here which is in the json format and it will you know help us to create a credentials so once our credential has been set up the first step is going to be you know take the input files from our local and just upload it on the gcp bucket for that we are going to define our local directory first which is going to be input and under this input we do have three files then we are using this storage package under storage we are going to get this client this storage would help us to access the Google Cloud storage. Under this client, you can see like we have to provide the project and credentials. So project ID is going to be our project name, which we have already saved it in the project ID. So we can just pass it over here. And under credentials, we can pass the credentials, which we have created over here. Once we have this enabled, we can just go ahead and just pass the client.bucket. Now we have created our client and use this client. Then we can go ahead and pass our bucket name. So this would give us a bucket bucket access and then actually it's a normal python code what we are doing over here like accessing this local directory we do have multiple files over here so we are looping over it for each of the file we are just providing a correct path of the file so which is going to be this directory name and then the file name so this we are accessing it from here and putting it into this full file path and then to load the data we are using this blob method and you can see under this blob method we can pass our blob name which is going to be our file name in this case create a blob out of this file name and this we are creating it by passing this bucket dot blob this would give us a blob and then actually using this blob we can go ahead and invoke this up upload method and under this upload method you can see like we can pass our data for each file actually we are opening a file reading that file and just loading that into a blob this particular method would help us to load our file file with the data we will just go ahead and you know try to run this code first i will just uncomment this so let me just go ahead and run this you can see like it has printed all these three details which we are printing it over here it is picking the correct values and after that you can see like we haven't got anything so here you can see in gc bucket now we do like all this file has been uploaded and the size is 22b so it means our method has been executed as expected now actually next action what we can do we already have all these files over here so we can list it out to list it out actually we can execute this particular method here also actually we have to create a client first we can create our client by passing credentials and project id and then actually we have to create this bucket variable to access this particular bucket and under this bucket to list all the files what we have we do have a method of list underscore blob and then we can just go over all the blobs and print out the name now once you do that you should be able to see whatever the files you have on the storage i can just then uncomment this list blobs and i will just execute it and you can see i can see whatever the file we have uploaded over there which is going to be sample one sample two and and sample 3.txt other action what we can try is reading the blob data as of now actually we are just listing the file what we have but now actually we want to read the blob data what we have under the file so to read the blob data again actually we have to create a client and the bucket and then we have to list over the blobs like what we did earlier now we have to do like one more thing extra earlier actually we were just getting the blob and printing the blob name here actually we are going to invoke this particular method which is going to be blob dot download as text and this is going to give us a data what we have in the blob and then we can just go ahead and print the data so let me just go ahead and execute this code as well and we are getting a permission issue it means we are missing certain permissions to read the blob data and here is saying like does not have storage dot object dot get access to provide that what we can do we can again go to permissions and under permission we can just click on grant access we have to provide our service account id here it's saying object so i will just search for object so here it is saying like we don't have storage object dot get access i can just go ahead and provide the admin one but i am just looking for a specific permission for this so here is a creator here is a user i will just go ahead and provide this i think it should work in our case and policy has been updated now let me go back and try to run this again and now you can see like we are able to get the content of the file so this is sample file one what we are getting from first file then second file and then third file similar to that we can perform certain other actions as well like deleting what we have in the bucket you can just try that option that's all what we have in this video thank you for watching